and these are the books that I read in July. Before I tell you about the books that I read, I want to reach back here to our booktuber shout out book. And we're going to look in here and pick somebody randomly to shout out. Today's shout out goes to This Story Ain't Over. I will link their channel down in the description, so make sure to go over and subscribe to them. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe to this channel. Subscribe to my Spanish booktube channel if you wanna see this video in Spanish. And of course, give this video a big thumbs up. It really does help me out and lets me know that you are enjoying my content. <laughs> I read 14 books in July. I read three classics. I read five children's classics. I read one mystery, four graphic novels, and one middle grade mystery. For Jane Austen July, I read Persuasion, and I've already done a separate video review of Persuasion and the movie adaptation of Persuasion. So I will link that video up above and down below so you can go and see all my thoughts about Jane Austen. Also, as sort of as part of Jane Austen July, I was trying to read a contemporary of Jane Austen. So I was reading through Le Mis. I got kind of bogged down in the middle and took a break from it, but I'm going to be finishing Le Mis in August. I also read a Poirot mystery by Agatha Christie. I read Peril at End House, and I've already done a separate book review video of that one as well, along with the movie adaptation of Peril at End House. So I will be sure to link my video for that up above and down below so you can see all my thoughts about Poirot. I read The Eight Cousins Duology by Louisa May Alcott. That's Eight Cousins and Rose in Bloom. I think I've read these probably 15 or 20 times by now. I reread them so much when I was a teenager and I still really love them. In Eight Cousins, Rose has to deal with her seven boy cousins and she's the only girl and all of her aunts are worried that she's going to end up as the most shameful tomboy. I really love the close relationships of the family in this book. The aunts and the uncles and the cousins, and they're all just so affectionate and so close. But I especially love the friendship between Rose and her friend Phoebe. They are so cute and giggly, but their friendship is also really strong through tough times. It's just the sweetest friendship. I really love the charming writing style and the wholesome story. There are a lot of moral lessons <laughs> that you learn, but I don't really mind being preached at when it's so entertaining. And then in Rose in Bloom, Rose is growing up and so are some of her cousins. Suddenly they're all on the brink of adulthood and they're thinking about their careers and romance. This one has somewhat more mature themes than the first one. So there's alcoholism, there's a death in the family, there's kind of some themes about elitism and morals and um, philanthropy. So I really like that there is kind of a more purposeful story in this second book. I love Phoebe and Rose's sweet friendship even more in this second book because now they're growing into adult women and so their friendship and their closeness, just this fierce loyalty that they have for one another really weathers the storms. I love the personalities of all of the boy cousins, but the three oldest are the ones that we get to know the best. So Archie, Mac, and Charlie are kind of the focus along with Rose and Phoebe in this second book. I just love seeing how they all grow and develop through the story. Every time that I reread Eight Cousins and Rose in Bloom, I give them both five stars. In July, I started to reread a whole bunch of my favorite children's classics. So I read a couple of Roald Dahl. I reread The Twits, which is more of a short story, really. Mr. and Mrs. Twit are horrible people and they play nasty tricks on each other. They kill birds and they keep monkeys locked in a cage. This has never been my favorite Roald Dahl book, but this is a cute one and it has that sparky Roald Dahl flavor to it. But I think I just prefer some of his longer, more structured stories rather than this short one. I also reread Danny the Champion of the World which is one of my two favorite Roald Dolls. My favorite favorite is Matilda, and I think probably my second favorite is Danny, Champion of the World. The best thing about it is that Danny and his father have this really close relationship. One night, Danny discovers that his father has a delightful secret, and he needs Danny's help. That connection between father and son is just so precious. And Danny 
is such a clever and intelligent little boy with a good heart. There is something just so charming about Roald Dahl's books. Every time that I reread one of his books, I am just swept away into this world of enchantment. I gave this one five stars. And I reread Mrs. Frisbee and the Rats of Nim. Mrs. Frisbee's son is sick in bed and he cannot be moved and the farmer is coming to plow up the fields where they live. So Mrs. Frisbee goes to the rats to ask for help and she finds out about their secret past. I just love this book more and more every time that I read it. It's so interesting to discover the secret past of the rats and even their current culture and how they live. The whole world building of this society and culture of animals all around the farm is so intricate. And I just love stories about mice because they're so little. Mrs. Frisbee is a really wonderful main character. She can be very timid, of course, but she can also be incredibly brave when she has to be. She does amazing things and she takes a lot of risks in order to save her children. She's intelligent and warm-hearted and I just love her personality. There is something really compelling about the writing style. With just a few sentences, you really care about about these characters and it really matters to you what happens to them. I mean, no wonder this book won a Newbery Award. I always give it five stars. If you've watched the movie Secret of Nim, don't pay any attention to the movie. The book is really wonderful. The movie is just kind of creepy and weird, but the book is fantastic. I also reread one of my favorite books by Edith Nesbitt, Five Children and It. Five siblings find a Samiad, a sand fairy, and the fairy agrees to grant them one wish every day. They wish for money and beauty and wings and all of their wishes go terribly wrong. This is such a whimsical and charming story. I just love the setting and the time period in the early 1900s. And the siblings are so real. They are silly and cross and affectionate. They fight sometimes, but they also take care of each other. And the magic is really beautiful and imaginative and weird. It's just so funny and interesting to read about all the trouble and the situations they get themselves into with all of their foolish wishes. I always give this book five stars. I also reread Magic or Not by Edward Eager. This is the fifth book in the Tales of Magic series, but you can read it as a standalone. When the twins, Laura and James, move to the country, they find an old wishing well, and they start to test the magic waters with their wishes. The wishes seem to come true, but they come true in such a regular and sort of mundane way that the children are wondering, was it magic or was it just a coincidence? I just love everything about this book. The whimsical plot, the endearing characters, and the way the author just keeps you guessing right up to the end. Was it really magic or not? I for one definitely believe that it was magic. A mild sort of magic, but magic nonetheless. The best part is seeing how the twins and the neighborhood children kind of gradually make friends and they begin to understand one another and rely on each other through their adventures, eventually becoming a close-knit group. That friendship dynamic is what really pushes the story along and makes every moment sort of delightfully peppery. I gave this book four stars. I also read volumes six, seven, and eight of Silver Spoon. Hachiken is a boy from the city who goes to a boarding school out in the country and has to learn how to deal with farm animals and everything about farming. So it can be really funny because he's just so clueless, but he is so determined to learn everything about farming and animal husbandry. And we also follow the adventures of his classmates as he begins to make friends. Through these three volumes, the, the latest three that I read, there is so much more of a connection between Hachiken and certain of his friends. So we really get to see more emotional scenes between them where they really start to pull together in the middle of difficult circumstances. So I am so enjoying this series and I'm gonna keep reading the rest of these. I think I gave each one of these four stars. I also read a graphic novel by Neil Gaiman. I'm gonna have to read this because it's very long. Forbidden Brides of the Faceless Slaves in the Secret House of the Night of Dread Desire. That is an extremely long title. But this graphic novel follows a writer who is struggling to write about real life. He's writing a tale of zombies and dreadful mysteries down in the dungeons and evil pacts with vile powers of darkness. 
It is a hilarious parody of horror stories. I really loved the shadowy art style in this book. It is so expressive and it's kind of chaotic. So it creates this definite mood for this tale of nefarious deeds. I am not a fan of horror stories because I will really get too scared, but this was actually just more funny than it was horrifying. And it makes fun of typical horror tropes in such a clever way that it just wasn't scary at all. There is a fantastic plot twist at the end, as one would expect from Neil Gaiman. <laughs> I gave it four stars. I enjoyed it so much. And I only read one book in July that was sent to me from a publisher in exchange for a free and honest review, and that was Cold-Blooded Myrtle by E.C. Bunce. This is the third book in the Myrtle series, and I have just adored every book in this series so far. I really, really get excited about Myrtle. In this third book, Myrtle is preparing for Christmas when the proprietor of a mercantile shop is found dead. Myrtle has to investigate the cold case disappearance of a young woman from years and years ago in order to solve the current murder case. One of the things that makes me fall in love with each Myrtle book is the incredible character development. Myrtle especially, but each one of the characters has really great development and depth to their personalities. The writing just draws you in right from the beginning. And the story and the plot is just so clever and interesting. I was massively curious about every clue trying to unravel all of these different layers of what is going on. One of the big parts that I really like is the world building. You have to dive into the history of this town and the secret past that different people might be trying to cover up in order to solve the current day mystery. So it gives a lot of depth to Myrtle's world. There is a ton of witty dialogue and the writing is just so humorous and fun. I wish I could give this book 10 stars. It's just a complete delight. But since the star rating on Goodreads only goes up to five stars, then I just have to give it five stars. But really it should be 10 out of five stars. <laughs> And those are the books that I read in July. Please leave me a comment down below and let me know what was one of your favorite books that you read in July. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and remember the right book in the right hands at the right time can change the world.